This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 4, The City of Bhaktapur. Hey, you. Are you walking all alone? Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest video podcast. I'm John Miller. So last time we saw Everest for the first time, up close, and that was really great. Hope you guys all enjoyed that, and if you haven't uh, seen it, go check it out. And uh, today we're going to poke around uh, a little bit further into the Kathmandu Valley and see some more of uh, what the Kathmandu Valley has to offer. It's an amazing place. So today I am joined by Major King. How you doing, Major? I'm good, John. I've got shorts on. That's a great day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, also on the line with us today is Ben Clark. How you doing, Ben? Awesome. That's great. Short and sweet. All right. Well, let's be short and sweet here with this intro. Let's get right to the video. Here we go. Like we said in the last episode, um, Ben and I were doing what basically amounted to blogging and podcasting back in 2003. So this has been working on uh, one of the, we called them dispatches. Sounded very official. We were running on very little sleep. Too much to do. How many hours we fly for? <clears throat> Too many. So Ben, why don't you tell us about what's going on here? Yeah, one of the things that I started doing the last two years is uh, returning my artistic roots as a classically trained visual artist. And part of my con process started out, you know, spending a lot of time in the mountains, enjoying all the different forms and whatnot. And now, when I go on a trip, I usually probably put together a patch of some kind, just for the hell of it, just so, you know, if it's a team of folks and it's a crew, then I want everybody to feel like we're all in it together. And then now, what I've started to do um, for stuff that's smaller and tighter, uh, like alpine climbing, is to paint or draw the route before I go do it. So I feel like the visualization process is always a, a big part of going into the mountains and experiencing them. Yeah, like this yellow. Yeah, I like that yellow. Uh, white. And it's also something, these these patches are fairly easy to come by in Tamil. There's a lot of these embroidery they, shops. Uh, when can they be these guys can bang it out in no time, and it's beautiful. You get the feeling these guys make a significant amount of their income, though, in a pretty short time span during climbing season, do you think? Or do you think this goes on year-round? They've got about, I bet, probably know, 20 weeks a year. We can still have They sure do a copious amount of work, though. Yeah. I mean, look at that shop, how much went into just what's sitting on the wall. Well, you might have missed it. We might have been talking over it, but Ben asked, you know, how long, how long can you get this? How long is it going to take you to get this done? And he said, uh, three days. And uh, we need it the next day. <laughs> Uh, uh, I love this guy, man. This is classic. I like street people. Oh, it's just so much fun. <laughs> yeah, just the simplicity and the happiness expressed is uh, pretty cool, I think. Absolutely. I've never seen an instrument like that. I bought one, and uh, I have no idea how he could be playing it like that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, it's unreal to me that he can be so good at it. Yeah. Uh. I love his voice. <laughs> oh, there's the competition. He's like, he's the devil, he's about to play the devil came down in Georgia. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm from City, I'm from the real city. I lost my father when I'm eight. This is my life story. <laughs> I don't know what that. <laughs> kids are kids everywhere. Yep. Singer. Singer, yeah, Eminem. 
Eminem. So, oh, that's what he's I talking about. And I have, and I, I lose my mother also in here. They found it with me. So I'm walking, you know. So I, so I become a pop singer. And I make a lot of seeds. <laughs> There will be an ice cream truck in 10 minutes. A communist ice cream truck, I believe. Hello. Hello. Look at these cuties. You know, the thing is, most of these kids uh, take a bus, like, way across town, do they not? You know, just, just to be there to work or to do whatever. Well, she was asking you for money. She wanted to know if you had a few rupees on you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think most of these kids live in the Tamil district. No. I always like these shots. Just beautiful stuff. My Wong. He was the man. You got company, man. Hey. What's up, Ma Wong? <laughs> How you doing? Good to, you. Good to see you. Yeah, what's going on? Not much. Yeah. What's up, Ong Dong? <laughs> hey, man. What's up? <laughs> so, Ben, you want to quickly fill us in on who Long Wong is? Yeah. Long Wong is one of my oh, summit man, partners. Long Wong and I had climbed together, um, I guess, in 2002 on Dalagiri. Had a great time. We were in a big team, and it was really uh, his friends and staff that were along um, <laughs> while we were climbing that peak that made that trip so incredible. And so I really enjoyed kind of his crew and the folks that he runs with and just said, hey, you know, you, me, and our buddy Lockba here, we should go climb this peak together, have a good time. And at the same time, let's get as many of your buddies out there to hang out and let's chill. It's a great time. He comes with a cool crew, and he himself is a quite the uh, – Quite the continental. <laughs> hmm. Pretty astute businessman, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. he's one of the owners of Nomad Expeditions, our, our expedition company. Our guide company. Provided all the support for the expedition. He's watching our first video dispatch. I can't believe we set that computer on the edge of the roof like that. <laughs> Looks kind of yeah, precarious. Yeah, the <laughs> purpose in that? <laughs> <laughs> Think of all the spots we could have sat that thing. People, sure. So. Yeah. But it's cool. It's like this way people can check out what's going on. We don't. We can climb the mountain and come back down, and then you know I don't have to take this on any mountain. It's just you know we climb the mountain. That's the the priority. I saw that uh, EverestNews.com. Two yeah, two Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was really good. Nice. Every strap is a. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the way I look at it. Exactly. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know, I mean, we have to respect the mountain, and we we can challenge with the nature, but mm -hmm. we're gonna try. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You just every step, you know. Yeah. It, there's every step. Yeah. Closer to the. Yeah, and that's yeah. I'll take that's that. I mean, that's the way it is. I'm yeah. working too long to come yeah. over here and do, yeah. try and do this thing to just. Yeah you know, not appreciate it. And that's damn straight. You know, the mountains I think it's <laughs> it's always been the Westerners. All of us see it as it's the top. It's you gotta have the top and that's just it. But it's like you know, going to these places like going to Dog Gear, that was amazing. And you know, going to Everest, that's amazing. Exactly. And it's it's just being there. I mean, maybe I'm just young and, and you know, naive, but I think that that's really cool. Oh that's I mean, just that's getting experience it. if you could get into there. Yeah. Instead of like uh, getting on the top right just that's the hardest part yeah <laughs> no it's like get into there is harder than the, like getting yeah to the top that's what i think yeah. and i think that when you get to the top that's sweet but that's sweet yeah. that's a bonus it is yeah. it's being here and trying that's what's exactly. cool yes we will that was two times in two days that we were told that the summit was a bonus I think that's really yeah. important. Liz Holly in the previous episode said that, and then Long Wong did the very next day, and it's true. Long Wong, he'd never summited it before. That's right. I mean, he'd been on the hill quite a few times. Hey, you guys are talking over my amazing time-lapse sunrise over Kathmandu. That was beautiful stuff. <laughs> you worked hard. <laughs> Hello. 
Oh no, Major, this is this is oh, your deal thank here. You very much. Oh, uh, this is a girl that uh, <laughs> saved my butt. She found a lens cap that I had dropped what the night before. Hey, Sarita, how old are you? Uh, coming back okay. from the restaurant. Right. And you wouldn't think a lens cap would be a big deal, but it kind of is. You know, it's just how you keep your lens clean and you keep it from getting scratched and whatnot. And I, I was just amazed that this girl found it and I uh, just could not thank her enough, you know, for what she did. I uh, ended up taking her and her friends out to lunch at a pizza place. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, which was pretty yeah. interesting, too. So It was neat. Good experience. We need tomorrow. Yeah. It reminded me of my daughter you know, at the time. Uh, I think my daughter was probably 10. And anyway. I forget how old she was, but, you know, close in age. Okay. I'm coming back, Jamal, because she's fine. Okay, we'll try. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's way cool. Yeah. I can't believe that. <laughs> nuts. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, I wrote in my journal this morning about this whole experience with her, that's why I remember yeah. her name, I mean, I just met her last night, and uh, she, she was trying to help me find it. Yeah. You know? People here want to help. Yeah, I mean, I wrote, well, of course people want your business and they want your money, but but it's sincere, too, right. you know, to to do whatever they can for you, so. That's cool. Um, yeah. It makes the place, it makes the experience. Well, I, I told her last night I'd give her 500 rupees, and then I, when I went to bed, I felt guilty because I only gave her 100 rupees for the purse. I'm like, you know, yeah. she was helping me. I, should, well, I, I felt guilty about it then, but it's all good now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. Lakpanuru. Lakpanuru. Ben Clark. Lakpanuru. <laughs> I have no idea where we were walking to. Just no I, I think many people in Catman do feel that way, John. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is you pay very close attention to your route so you can find your way back. Uh, uh -huh. I couldn't I couldn't tell which way was what, so I stuck close to Ben. He knew where he was going. I had no idea where I was at any given point in time. No, no idea. I, it'd be fun to go back and go explore again. The road to Bhaktapur. Yes. Yeah? Yep. Headed to Bhaktapur. I remember just being stuck in that little spot for a while. Yeah. It's again. It's a free for all, and all those motorcycles and bikes, and it's just. Yeah, I watched the, the vehicles in this video, and it's like memo to America: you don't have to drive a vehicle that is so big. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. have to be that way, people. But the other thing is that the uh, there's no emissions control there or anything, so the the fumes are pretty severe, and you really do get a sore throat hanging out in Kathmandu. Yeah. Kathmandu yeah. cough. But you get all this awesome music on the radio. Whenever Lawong's climbing and he's got headphones on, he's listening to Nepali music, and I can see why. I love it. it's very catchy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I can listen to this stuff all day. All day. Here we are at the gate to Bhaktapur. We meet we meet a kid here named K1, and uh, he was our guide. He took us around. He did a good job. So this is his part of the podcast coming up. Yeah, he's he was amazing. Yeah, you, know, you just people come up and solicit you all the time and. And while 99% of them are sincere, you just never quite know what you're getting when you basically sign on for someone to, you know, help you out for the day. And then he was just, uh, could not have been any better. So this is the city, Bhaktapur. Bhakta means priest. So Pur is city. So this is the city as a priest. And it's also known as the city of devotees. And what you see inside of the town, it's as the open museum of architects, art and architect in Nepal. It's as the older kingdom in Kathmandu Valley also. 
And now we are in Darbar Square of Bhaktapur. Like Darbar means palace in Nepali. So this was the ancient palace area of Kathmandu Valley, which was started from 9th century till 17th century. One more time. What does is, what is Bhaktapur mean? Like Bhakta, it's priest, and Pur means city. So this is the city of a priest. Because we had that much festival, which festival we don't have in whole Nepal. So after also two, three days, we had a new year, but we have a big festival here, not above in Nepal, only here. So that's why also it's called the city of priests. Okay, this is the temple of Durga. It's as a South Indian architect from India, but we pray this as a Hindu goddess. And this is the temple made by the last king from Bhaktapur at 17th century. So this is very famous in Bhaktapur as a temple of Pig Durga, which is called Bhatsala Durga, as the goddesses of Pig. So we have nine reincarnations in these goddesses. So this is one of them, what we see in the temple in the second floor. We see the face of pig, this is the goddesses. What we pray always, just at morning time, because we never visit to temples after food. Because of food, we will become dirty. So we come before the food to pray. I remember seeing, yeah. seeing that pretty often. You get people hanging around and just happy, because they're so happy to be there. It's like they're on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I get real happy on vacation. <laughs> yeah, this is the dog barking bell from Nepal. And this bell used that time when there was no police station. If there was anybody who came as a new person in the city, the dog began to bark after seeing them. So it used to say the dog barking bell. And this was made by a tantric man who knows the black magic about Hindu religion. So he made this for the dog barking bell. Now it doesn't work because this was broken in the earthquake time of 1934, you know. So this is the temple of Pashupati Nath. He's known as Pashu means animal and Pati means husband. So see, he's the husband of animals and he's called Siva, which is the major god in Hindu religion. And what you see the temple, the style of the temple, this is from Nepali style, so it's known as Pagoda. So we have three styles in Nepal, like Pagoda, Shikara and Stupa. So these are created before 9th century also in Nepal. But nowadays you see mostly Pagoda's temple in Bhaktapur, sir. This shot always makes me smile. Again, you were saying kids are kids no matter where. You know just what this girl's saying here. I get the feeling they're used to cameras there. Yeah. So this is the temple of the angriest god in Hindu religion and he's known as Bhairav, who is reincarnation of Shiva. And in this temple, if we don't give him blood, he used to destroy. So we worried with him that he never destroyed this city. So we sacrifice him a buffalo every Saturday. Then after giving him blood, he used to become cool because he used to known as Kal Bhairav, as a danger god in Hindu religion. So this temple is as a third older temple in Nepal. It's made from 14th century by the Mughal rulers. They made this temple as an angriest god, also to protect the city by his angriest power. But after time, he was going to give troubles for local people. So people start to give him buffalo, then he stopped to give troubles. So this is the place where we sacrifice buffalo. And when we give him blood, we give him blood from the body, not by Look hand. closely, people. Blood. Dried blood. So we must give him blood. Yeah. From the body of buffalo. They it didn't hit me until I got right up close so on it. Like, wow, they really do sacrifice buffalo here, like right here, and then they kind of just leave it. And what you see, all these yep. blacks, these all are not the smoke, they all are blood. You know, what they throw from body, it goes anywhere. It's I don't know, to me that place was fascinating, and, you know, as a Christian you, even, you think back to the Old Testament times where they did animal sacrifice, and, you know, you look at this place, so it kind of makes you think twice. They're building that to put on the side of a wheel, in that enormous cart.
<laughs> I always like that. You know what? I just watching this video, John. It kind of just strikes me that you just feel like there's more integration between the young and the old in this country than in the United States. Yeah, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like we isolate our elderly more here in the U.S. than perhaps in other places. You know, I hadn't thought of that, Major, but yeah, I really can. I see what you're talking about. Well, I just I think the elderly are honored more for their knowledge, uh, in uh, more so in other cultures than in our own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite shots. No, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Just natural curiosity. When you go into another country, you're never quite sure, you know, about filming people. You're not sure how they're going to react. It just turned into a complete non-issue. We yeah. always were, we were, we were, you know, modest and honorable to people, and but uh, just it was never oh. a problem. This guy's amazing. <laughs> you better talk about him, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget when I got back, uh, a friend of mine, Montgomery, had been in Nepal a few years before, and the, uh, I was showing him my photos, and he's like, you saw that guy? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, man, he got at least three dollars out of us. Like, uh, I mean, he is, you know, traveling, I guess, a shaman, but at the same time, he's created a, uh, an interesting lifestyle around it in that area a <laughs> recognizable character well that's just it that's you know he, he you, you take his picture and you say thank you by this giving him some finished, some money yep. need to paint this yeah. gold, he's like the chicken man in new orleans faces, <laughs> except different out, and after that they cut it off and they sell for Nepalese, for tourists everybody. this place is pretty cool this a little small room with uh, this is the city artwork of art and architect so this kind of art they made since 12th century in this city, so now time it's famous all over Nepal and all over in Europe also it used to go. This is the goddesses of education. Of education. So intricate. Okay, this is the gods which we are not allowed to sacrifice because it's holy, it's given by us to the god. For example, if we are ill sometime, then we offer to the god to make us healthy and we give them present as making us healthy. So this can goes anywhere and it can eat anything. It goes all the houses to ask the food himself and they must give them. If we don't give, he never goes back from the house. So always he stay in the house. Okay, what's, what's, what's up with that, John? And I thought cows were uh, we sacred in Hindu. Him, you know? well, mm -hmm. So we pray him as a symbol of God. That's the goat. Yeah. So yeah. The goat holy. knows what's up. <laughs> yeah, that uh, goat listen, listen carefully here. Yeah, these are not holy. He, he just, you just said, these are not holy. <laughs> <laughs> these, 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 are not, these are just goats. <laughs> these are just goats. Yeah, this tattoo it's not about like becoming punk. It's a traditional tattoo. It means oh, when no. they die. Mahu thanda ko mahu bade chong ana kui ko ba. Thanda ko mahu ya. Kui ko. Kui ko ba thanda. Can can I go get the tattoo? Ana You look closely. There's a tattoo on our leg. That's what we're talking about. Huh. Yeah, this tattoo, we, we, we used to believe that when we died, we didn't have nothing. So after sale, this tattoo also we go to heaven. So this Newari family used this as a symbol of their things, what they can sell. Like what we buy in our life, we are allowed to sell. So that means they buy this in their whole life. When they died, they can sell this to go to heaven. So it's a way to go to them, to the heaven. Sell the tattoo? Yes. Sell the tattoo to the God and goes to heaven. So that's the way they had tattoos. Nobody. Is she okay? <laughs> Who's in control of this situation? <laughs> is it yeah, him or is it her? <laughs> Yeah, this is the typical kiln from Bhaktapur. And when they finish to make this pot, they dry into the sun and they put clay color. After that drying, they come here and they put the rice straw. And after pot, after rice straw pot, at last they cover by the ash because it won't burn very fast. 
So after like this, they put here 72 hours, and after that it becomes red, and they bring this out to sell out part of Kathmandu Valley also. So this is famous poetry place in whole Kathmandu area. <laughs> Is he going to bring one out? Yeah, he's firing here, you know. So mm -hmm. he's saying that he, he knows how to make pots. <laughs> he's going to show us that how they make pots. Toasty warm in this place. I'm sure. Is he, does he, put, is he going to pull one out? Yeah, now he's just firing this, you know. He looks, he's he's firing, yes. Oh, no. Because this is his pots. Uh. Like this is square, it's divided, you know, for people one by one. They yeah. Use. This is okay. It's already born. And this kind of pot we use for lamp, oil lamp, you know, butter lamp, mm -hmm. oil lamp, mm -hmm. Okay. Candle. Mm -hmm. I like that shot too. Yeah. So, I gotta remind people, this was just after the United States went to war on terrorists uh, by going to war with Iraq. And uh, Bush had declared that he, he was watching countries that he, you know, that the United States felt were harboring terrorists. And Nepal was put on that list because of the Maoist rebellion. As I understand it, this uh, demonstration here was to protest the uh, Americans basically designating Nepal as a, a terrorist, a, nation. terrorist nation. And they were saying, hey, let us take care of the situation here. Not yeah, you don't Americans. Label, don't label our situation. But their, their commentary, I think. But we were American. And so K1 said, hey, guys, let's go. You don't <laughs> need to be here right now. So we ran with our tail between our legs. Yeah. And those people just came out of nowhere. It was amazing. All of a sudden there's thousands of people. Yeah, from two different directions too. Just poured into the main square. Yeah, there's so many buildings around there that it just shields the sound. You can't hear anything. It's totally quiet. <laughs> well guys that's that's it for the episode as ben walks off into the sunset and uh well thanks so much guys appreciate it yeah thanks yeah, it's a lot of, so it's a lot uh, of fun to watch this stuff again <laughs> yeah it is yeah we haven't watched it in years it's good to see it it's good to remember yeah. all the stories all the footage yeah, you absolutely. never remember so uh next time um we wrap things up in katmandu and get ready to depart for tibet and uh, are the patches going to be ready? Hmm. We'll have to find out. Well, thanks for watching. Now, if you haven't checked out the website yet, please visit it. You can find it at www.therestofevers.com. You know, I've added a lot of content there. I'm adding all of the email dispatches that Ben and I sent back. And uh, everything is synced up in chronological order with the episodes as I'm releasing them. So you can actually just go to the podcast episodes page and then click on uh, the description for the episode. And you'll find more than just the, the podcast description. You'll also find the email dispatches that we sent back that run in chronological order with the podcast as I'm releasing them. As always, our announcer is Marlon May and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. I'm John Miller. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com.